welcome to my next video. Today I have a watercolor butterfly tutorial for you and I'm going to walk you through my step-by-step -step process for how I painted the body and one wing. Unfortunately, my camera battery died while I was painting the second wing and I didn't notice that until it was too late. However, the nice thing about this piece is that the wings are fairly identical so the approach to the second wing is exactly the same as the first one. Okay, let's get into it. While I've been chatting away, you'll have seen me start the butterfly with the antenna and the head. Now you could have used masking fluid to leave those spots of white on the head, but I just simply painted around those areas. Next I moved on to the body and I did an initial wash. What you see me doing here though is while that section is wet, I'm dropping in little bits of color, just tapping it in and letting it bleed out so that it has a fuzzy edge rather than a hard line. Okay, next I am doing a very light wash of yellow on the scales of the wings. I could have come in a bit darker, but I wanted to make sure I had the right yellow. So while it's a bit damp, I'm dropping in more color and using my brush to move the pigment. Now I'm adding another layer of the yellow on top of that to make it darker. And that color I just reached for is a yellow ochre. And I'm coming in with a smaller brush now and using the tip of it to make more um, tiny strokes to make it almost look fuzzy. So now that's a size zero brush that I've come in again to carefully move the pigment around. Now if you notice, I'm working section by section, scale by scale. Uh, I do this so that while one scale is drying or one area of the painting is drying, I can keep working on another section rather than sitting and waiting. Uh, another option is to use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time. brush and starting to add the black. Felt like I needed to add a little bit of that contrast so I could see how far I need to take the yellow and the yellow orange for the wings. Here you see me glazing in light translucent layers of color on the different scales to build up the color intensity. Again, you could use masking fluid for those dots of white um, so that you don't have to paint carefully around them, but I don't really use masking fluid very often personally, um, just because I, I think as I was teaching myself to paint, I never had it, and I've learned to do it without. I decided I wanted to add the black again to give some contrast to the yellow so I could see a little bit better how much brighter or what else I need to do to make those yellow scales really pop. Using my brush, I'm dotting in a little bit of the black paint in the areas where the black meets the yellow. Now I'm coming in with a fine brush and doing thin hairline strokes. This is just a way of adding a little bit of texture to the wing, making it look a little bit more fuzzy. I'm darkening certain areas that are close to the body 
to make it seem like there's some shadows being cast by the forewing and the body on the hindwing, which is what I'm painting right now. Okay, so next I'm moving on to the forewing, the scales of the forewing. And as you can see here, I'm just glazing in a yellow orange. And if you wanted to paint this same butterfly with less detail, then you could just, you know, do one or two layers painting wet and wet and allowing the colors to bleed rather than coming in with the small brush to do those hair-like lines. So while those scales dry, I've moved back to the body and I'm starting to add in the white dots on the body. Here I'm using white gouache so that I can paint over top of the darker colors that I laid down earlier which are the foundation, you know, the area underneath that's going to provide some contrast to these white dots that I'm adding. So there you saw me add some black. I realized I needed to have a bit of a darker base so that those white dots that I'm going to add with the gouache pop more. Now I'm adding a bit of definition coming back in with a darker color to the areas that I've dotted in white. As you'll see, it's a little bit of a push and pull, a back and forth as I try and find the right balance. Fortunately, when I'm using something like gouache, I'm able to come back in with a lighter color. If I was trying that with a white watercolor, it wouldn't be as successful. So now I'm glazing in more of an orange yellow over those scales again but as I add pigment to soften the edges I come back in with a little bit of water now what you don't see in this sped up video is the time I've let those scales dry so that when I come back in to do these lines or those hairline strokes they don't become fuzzy by bleeding into the paper around it if it's still wet so it's very important when you want to add detail, you need to let your previous layers be completely dry or else they won't maintain their structure. They'll become blurry looking. So while those scales are drying, I've moved on to the next set of scales, repeating the same process, glazing in light layers of yellow orange, letting it dry, and then coming back in after to add some detail. So here again is a good example of how I've added color and in order to get rid of those edges I come back in with the wet brush to stretch the pigment across the scale to move it across and blur those edges. And I do this so that I can start adding a bit of a darker area to the wing and make it fade into the lighter area with a smooth transition. So while those previous scales dry, I move on to the next scale and repeat these same steps, glazing in layers, adding in some darker tones, blurring the edges with a damp brush. 
waiting for the scales to dry if I want to add any lines or details. So now I'm coming in with the black, dotting in the black where it meets the orange scale and slowly filling in that whole tip of the wing and painting around the areas that are supposed to be white. Here it probably would have been faster and easier to paint if I use masking fluid to block out those areas because then I can just paint over top without having to be careful. But like I said, I've gotten used to painting this way and I actually don't own masking fluid. So now that the black of the wing is finished, I'm coming into those white dots and I'm very lightly glazing in fine lines using the Daniel Smith color Moon Glow uh, to make them look less like areas of paper that I forgot to paint and make them look like part of the wing by adding their own little shadows. Because the wing is not perfectly flat, it's got creases and bumps and ridges. So now I'm approaching the finish line for this wing. I'm just adding in a few little details close to the body because underneath the top part, there's almost like little fuzz and fur. So I'm trying to bring those out. I'm also adding in a little bit more white with the white gouache using the size zero brush. Now this wing is pretty much complete. Like I said, I'm just doing a few extra touches here and there on the body and on the black portion of the wing in areas where I might have painted a little too much black. But I would say this is a finished butterfly wing. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, I will be filming more for this channel. I also create two tutorials per month on Patreon with longer videos that show real-time painting moments. And I provide my line drawings, reference photos, and process shots to help you get started on your paintings. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye!